Lords of Uncreation is the third and final installment of Adrian Tchaikovsky's thrilling final architect series. I recommend this novel for those who relish a series where characters develop and become more fully realized with each new chapter. This is one of those series. I also recommend this if you're in the mood for space opera that really has space opera as the star. Sure, there's a lot of depth, military science fiction, philosophical dives, and so on, but the itch that this scratches more than anything is space opera. Ships in space and meaningful people and relationships in those vessels. Finally, I recommend this novel to the science fiction reader who's already read Shards of Earth and Eyes of the Void and love them both. Let's go finish up the series. Lords is a worthy continuation and definitely sticks the landing for a finale. Stick around even if you haven't started the series. I'm going to tell you when this gets spoilery at all. If you want to go zero spoilers, then just jump ahead to the end for some REM parody tribute music. The easy audience to recommend the series to are those who liked The Expanse series or even Star Wars. It's impossible to not recognize The Expanse parallels. More on that in a moment. Beginning with Shards of Earth, Tchaikovsky introduced Idris, an intermediary, one who can navigate ships through unspace. Unspace and throughways are responsible for faster than light speed interstellar travel. Intermediaries are also conditioned to connect with the mind or essence of the aggressive moon-sized beings the architects. The architects are enormous and deadly. These architects are responsible for having destroyed the Earth and other inhabited planets long ago, and they're a constant threat to wreak further havoc. Architects physically destroy planets and rework them into forms that have been said to resemble flower-like sculptures. Why they do this? Who knows? Humans have spread out into the universe and have colonized other worlds. This is still spoiler-free background and is shared in the glossary in the back of the book. Governed by the Council of Human Interests, also known as Hugh, humanity has spread out and met and collaborated with other species in the universe, including, among others, the worm-like Castigar, the crab-like Canalambra, and the Aesil, a supposed divine and technologically advanced race. Key characters are Idris and his crewmates on the ship, the Vulture God. The Vulture God can almost also be considered a character in this book as well. The Vulture God crew being a mix of strong personalities with no clear group consensus loyalty to any of the main political players, a captain thrust into the role of captain, and their seemingly free agent for higher status will certainly call to mind Holden and the crew of the Rosinante in the Expanse series. Without getting sidetracked, I'll also quickly shout out that this series also has arc ships, which might call to mind the generation ship, the Navu slash the Behemoth from Leviathan Wakes, uh, Caliban's War, etc. from the Expanse series. Vulture God crew and guests include another main character, Myrmidon Executor Solus, a Parthenia agent. The Parthenon is a military force created with genetically engineered women and meant to represent the ultimate advancement of the human species. These women are grown in parthenogenic vats. While the Parthenia have often come to the aid of the colonies to be the first line of defense against the architects, when the architect threat isn't imminent, conflict between the Parthenia, the colonies, and the essiel led hegemony are elevated. Now here's where we get mildly spoilery for books one and two of the series. In Lords of Uncreation, the tension between these different groups and races come to a head. In books one and two, everybody was working together despite tensions, but distrust, especially between the super soldier Parthenia and different factions and ideologies among the humans, have led to some unexpected alliances and targets. Lords of Uncreation will also put under the microscope the Parthenia urge, habit of laying their lives on the line for all of humanity. Is everybody on board with this? Is everyone cool with just being the shield that stands between humanity and destructive forces that would harm it? Should these women want something more, or is this just who they are? Significant returning cast from the first two books are Vulture God crew members, including the nervous Hanalabra Kit, who seems to find his voice a bit more, drone specialist and resident short-tempered cynic Ollie and her scorpion battle frame, Ali is more center stage in the finale, and as captain of the Vulture God will play a significant role in the conflict with the architects and their puppet masters. Kit, a formidable lawyer and close combat knife fighter, also returns, though her role feels less consequential. Tchaikovsky ups the character interest here in book three, elaborating further on the main non-architect villains from the last book, the devious nobleman from Magda, Raven Oscaro, and the one that I'll call best supporting actor, the unspeakable at Clue, the Razor and the Hook, 
still one of the great character names in all of science fiction. In Lords of Uncreation, there are a few theaters of action. One is, of course, the Vulture God popping in and out of unspace, stirring up trouble, getting caught in the middle of political conflict, and even making some unexpected and surprising bedfellows. There's the Eye, the mysterious originator station that provides Idris and other intermediaries a platform for enhanced unspace deep dives. The official mission here is to find the architect's hideout, their nursery, base of operations, and destroy it and they're young Idris knowing more than anybody else in the room and uncomfortable with the idea of architect genocide will quietly pursue his own agenda finding those who are even deeper in unspace whom he believes are forcing the architects on their path of destruction Lords of Uncreation will spend more time in unspace than the previous two books combined for my five likes and five dislikes I'm sticking spoiler free relative to Lords of Uncreation the last couple of likes and dislikes will be spoilery but I'm going to tell you when that happens for those of you who want to stick with this review as long as possible like number one we knew this going in, but the sacrifice of the intermediaries is so real, Tchaikovsky doubles down and shines even more light on what constant torture Idris's existence is. Dislike number one, a like for book three, but a dislike, I guess, for the series. The Magdans appear more formidable in the third book than they did in the previous two. Not by so much that I'd call it inconsistent, but in thinking about it, I like them more as a serious threat than as the pushovers that they seem to be in the previous installments. Like number two, the characters improve with each book. It's especially impressive how in the final pages, Tchaikovsky reminds us that Rollo, even though he died in the first book and only briefly spent time with Solus, is an integral player in her life and her evolution. Likewise, the bond with her found family of Kit, Ollie, and Chris helped shape who she has become. And of course then, the arc of her trust and unique style of love and respect for Idris it's just really well done. Dislike number two, Solus was a bit hamstrung, whereas she shines in the first two books. In Lords, she's a bit diminished and less consequential. Her screen time has been given to Ollie. The win here is that Ollie and Kit are a real treat, and Solus as just another Partheny cog really makes this story that much more realistic. She's just another Amazon and not a Wonder Woman. This is a bit redeemed in the final chapters as she does get a little bit more page time at that point. I promise to tell you this, so from here on out, everything can be considered spoilers, so stay on or hop off. Don't forget, we've got REM music at the end. Like number three, Raven's offer to Chris. This is one of many strong examples of solid dialogue, especially Chris's comment. There's a threat-shaped absence in this conversation, and Raven's... I invite you to consider the alternatives. Like number four, the unspeakable Aklu, the razor and the hook. I already love this character and it's still one of the best names in science fiction, but the scene when Ali is bringing grievances and asking the Ezreal for help, and it all seems kumbaya and they're ready to go kick butt. But wait, the unspeakable still has to face a reckoning from the other Ezreal? Almost forgot about that. Of course, Tchaikovsky does not, and he just proves to us all again how brilliant he is. Dislike number three, as exciting as wild as the ride through the three books was, there was a sense of, wow, this ride in and out of Unspace is cool and it's suspenseful, but once we get through it all, it's definitely gonna all work out. In only that sense, there's a bit of an anticlimactic ending. Dislike number four, the pace of the book is good, but Eyes of the Void set a bar that I was expecting this to match. Not exactly a dislike, but I was expecting a faster pace since this was the finale. Dislike number five, the Essiel technology was really interesting. There was a lot of unexplored ground left uncovered. I think if Essiel world building had been highlighted more, it would have really benefited the series. Like number five, Pitting the Perthini against each other addressed a really great conflict. I felt that the first two books really conditioned us to look for an eventual humans versus Perthini war, or at least a skirmish, and the Perthini mutiny was a really welcomed surprise. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read. Architects are stronger, they're stronger than Earth and every planet. Our fleets can Crystalline surprise Once you start doing terrible things because you had no choice Oh no, they've left on space Let's blow them up The next time round, you do terrible things Who's pulling the strings? Put them in the spot, light Make their 
You do terrible things because you want to, and the precedent is set. I'm 